Right then, welcome back to the channel. Five things we learned, Manchester United and Liverpool. And we have to start talking about Big Willie. So I, I actually thought, um, didn't really cover it too much yesterday, but I thought that was just a big performance uh, from Kambala. Not obviously his debut. Um, we have seen glimpses of him before, but what a performance from a young lad. He was immense. He was front foot aggressive as well, which I think uh, is real nice. Uh, rose to the challenge against a very difficult customer. Now, we can bag on Nunez's finishing um, and how many shots he requires to actually get a goal. He, he scored a lot of goals this year. He's been in pretty good form of late, but he isn't clinical. Um, and then on the flip side of that, you can say, well, he actually gets himself a lot of chances because his movement and his pace is ridiculous. Um, but he absolutely rose to the challenge, uh, Kambala did, against dealing with him. Because whether or not his finishings, um, all that, physically, he's still going to position himself in areas that are a problem to you. And and he, he managed pretty well against that. Um he played with the conviction that you're supposed to play with against Liverpool. And there was a moment in the first half as well where I think he made a block um, just at the side of the goal. And he turns around to the Stratford end and starts trying to G the Stratford end up. And I have got all the time in the world for that. You know, if he watches, I don't think he does. But if he watches, Willie, more of that. We want more of that. We want more players that play with the crowd. You know, don't try and shut us out. We're here together. And, you know, that synergy, that synergy is why Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is a legend because he got what it meant to be a fan playing. And it, you'll do you'll do no harm whatsoever to uh, to be one of us playing on the pitch. Really stepped up. Uh, and I also think Maguire deserves some praise as well. He was dominant in the air. Um, and he wasn't as exposed as he, he probably could have been considering how high a line we was asking him to play. Um, I think he was a little bit ponderous with the ball, um, and I don't think United were, were very good at all yesterday in possession, um, but you know, it, it was a, a good defensive performance from those, uh, and as well, again, like there were some real good moments from Delo. I've seen some comments sort of criticising Delo. Um, in terms of his defensive performance, but I thought it was strong. Again, I thought it was a pretty good performance from him defensively. Right, we've got another one here for you then, and it's brought to you by the Spring Cleaning Aces Manscaped. This season, it's all about sorting out your carpets and the drapes of the big names in below the waist grooming. Say goodbye to Winter Fuzz with Manscaped's Lawnmower 5.0 and watch as your confidence blooms like those April showers, May flowers. Step into the season and join 10 million fellas worldwide who put their trust in Manscaped. Swim by manscaped.com. Enter the code five things. That's the number five and things for 20% off plus free shipping. After getting acquainted with Manscaped, I am all in that spring fever. Let's welcome the season's champion, the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. There are two interchangeable heads, one for a standard trim and the new file blade for when you're in the mood for smooth. You've got LED lights. You can take it in the bath so you don't have to worry about um, the cleanup, it'll go in the shower. It looks waterproof. You can go wherever you want with it. And it's also a nice compact case that it comes in. It is the go-to travel companion. And don't forget, spring cleaning isn't just about your balls. It's about the full grooming experience with Manscapes as well. You've got the Beard Hedger Pro Kit and the Handyman Electric Face Shaver. Now, 20% off and get free shipping with the code 5 things at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and nothing on the shipping with the code 5 things at Manscaped. Nothing quite like a little bit of spring cleaning in your kecks. Go get it done. Number two, Maynu. Um, I mean, there isn't enough good to say about him at the moment because he is so good. Um, and I don't think yesterday was his best game. Um, but what good players do is produce moments. And I thought defensively he was really good. He almost did a job yesterday. Um, but as soon as you start seeing him get him into that final third and, and getting um, a little bit braver, and th this is, again, it shows the decision-making he has. You don't see him trying to do tricks and dribbles and stuff on the edge of our box. He keeps it ultra simple, and I love that. And then when we get into the opposition box, yeah, you'll start seeing him trying to do, like, two-footed dribbles around people and, and try and manipulate the ball in space and get shots off. His understanding of football is absolutely top draw, and his ability to be able to do whatever he wants in this game is evident. And... The further forward he gets, the more impact it appears that he has on games. He is a true number eight. He is um, 
he is potentially, at 18, he is potentially going to follow the same sort of trajectory as Brian Robson and Roy Keane. Now, a lot of people watching this think Roy Keane was just some sort of thug destroyer because you've listened to the Scouse media. Roy Keane was a footballer. Roy Keane was one of the best footballers in the Manchester United team. And when we first signed him, I think he was 21 when we first signed him from Nottingham Forest, he was a box-to-box, -box, a lot more tenacious, I would say, than Maynou. Was obviously a lot more aggressive than him. But pl played it simple at one end and actually got on the end of stuff at the other. And Brian Robson was the same. Now... At 18, we have no idea where Kobe Maynou's going to land up in, in terms of his influence and his position as a Manchester United player. But there are two, perhaps two of the greatest ever, that I would love to see him try to emulate. Because if he gets close to what Robbo or Roy Keane did, fuck me, do we have a serious footballer on our hands? And I, I don't know if the I don't know if Roy Keane had the level of composure that Maynou had at 18. So who knows? Let's just see what happens with him. Because who knows? I'm absolutely glad we've got him. The balance that he brings and the brilliance that he brings at both ends of the pitch prove to me he is an eight that requires a six alongside or behind him. And you just need to let him play football because he gets it. And, and th it's that quality that Brian Robson and Roy Keane had. Uh, and probably Michael Carrick had as well. It's just that innate understanding of football, when to do the right thing, and at, at what moment in the game, and whereabouts on the pitch, when to deliver that sort of technique or, or this. Or sometimes, today, guess what? I'm going to have to do a marking job on someone. Today, guess what? I'm going to have to do a pure defensive job on someone. Today, guess what? I might need to provide the winner that gets us over the line or, or score a goal that gets us the points. All of those players had that in them. And I think he's in that vein. Quality-wise, who knows where he ends up. But I think in terms of his playing style, yeah, that's who he is. Number three, Bruno. Outside of the, the moment of brilliance, um, I thought he was poor. And it was it was a frustrating performance. You could see the fans in the, in the stadium getting frustrated with him... He was going down easy, which I don't necessarily mind at all times, but he was going down easy, and he was arguing with the ref from early on. And it wasn't shithousery. It was, again, it, the, the word petulance is the only one that I can sort of bring to mind, and it was kind of like it wasn't the spirit that I think we needed in the game at the time. I thought we needed a bit more stoicism about the way we were going to play, like and a bit more grit. And even though I think Bruno plays like and acts and is gritty sometimes he comes across as sort of like fragile mentally which i know he clearly isn't but that's how it comes off and i think that that can have a certain effect on everybody else around him because it was having an effect on the crowd the crowd was getting frustrated with him you know when someone would come near him even in good opportunities he would throw himself on the floor or there would be moments where his final ball wasn't quite there. His final ball was pretty poor yesterday. Um, he might benefit from a rest. Now you've got Mason Mount seemingly back. You know, you we we still not seen Ahmad. Can one of these give the guy a night off? Because I think Bruno's still a hell of a player, and I think he's still a hell of a contributor to Manchester United. But I think he suffered from the sheer number of games he's played for club and country over the last few years without a break. He needs a break. Number four, Casemiro. He, the, the best days are behind him. And he is becoming a bit of a liability in and out of possession. And I think he had moments in the game yesterday where he looked really good. But he also had moments where you questioned the decision making of a player with the most experience on the pitch, I would argue. We desperately need an upgrade in our possession. It's desperately got to be someone that's a six. That's someone's natural instinct is to just drift to the centre line and sit in front of the defence. That's what we need. At times yesterday when United lost the ball, Maynou might have gone left to cover someone. Um, you might have seen um, 
Casemiro and Bruno being up part of the press towards the edge of the opposition box. So there's just a big gaping fucking hole in the centre of the park that someone needs to go and fill. And I think whoever replaces Casemiro for United has, that's for me is the most obvious position to upgrade. He, he was non-existent in the second half. I don't see him here past the summer. Um, and it's sad because last season he was so good. So good. Um, it isn't to be. And, and number five, I think we rode our luck, um, but it was nice for us to do that for once. Um, I think it was a completely questionable, if not blatant dive um, on wan Um But wan did give a ref the chance to make a decision. <clears throat> it was another 28 shots conceded, almost 4 XG. Now, 0.77 of that is for the fact it was a penalty, but the point stands. Liverpool were very wasteful. Um, and we made the most out of a, a couple of moments in the game where we had the opportunity to. Bruno's goal was a 0.01 goal, like literally a 1% chance to score, and he scored it. Um, this is where we're going to rue the mistakes of the last couple of weeks. Losing the three points against Chelsea, losing the two points yesterday, there's five points closer to where we should have been, and then the two points against Brentford... If you'd have collected those points, if you'd have collected those nine points, we are now, I think, four points off Villa with a game in hand and seven games to go, and four points off Spurs played the same. You can't tell me that if those results had have gone the right way, that Manchester United could not have got into fifth place and into the Champions League spots. The Chelsea game alone, the three points in that Chelsea game alone could have really been enough to have a fighting chance. But when you compound that with Brentford and, you know, okay, we didn't think we were going to get more than anything out of yesterday, but you could have ended up with all three. If you'd have got all of those nine points just in this last week, United could have been looking pretty good, especially with the people coming back for a Champions League spot. But that's the nature of football. The margins are small. And the consequences are severe. Anyway, that's my thoughts on the game. Please let me know your thoughts on the game down below. Cheers to everyone who's come and subscribed over on the House and IRL channel. We are now at 10,000 subscribers, so thank you very much. There is another video dropping, hopefully by the end of this week. So make sure to come and check that out. Um, and if you've not checked it out already, you can go and check all the stuff out on there as well, because it's all completely evergreen. It's not news and relevant to a certain time like this you can just go on a bit of a ride on there so uh, go check it out link for that will be in the description otherwise cheers for tuning in i'll catch you in the next one laters hey thank you for watching the video if you are new around these parts then don't forget to subscribe my channel is proudly supported by my community on patreon if you'd like to get a little bit of extra content a discord group meetups fiver side games weekly podcasts behind the scenes and even an occasional bit of transfer news as and when i get it then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too if you want to follow me on any of those platforms. Nice one.